Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Carlos with Twins Reef, and this is the Red Sea Reefer 300. And before we start today's video, I just want to let you guys know that today's video is slightly different. And the only reason being is because for the first time, I'm using my Samsung Flip 6 to record a video. I am not using a lens or a filter, my bad. Um, all I'm using is the pro settings and I only adjusted the white balance to 10 to 10 K besides that um, You know, we're basically recording a raw video using my phone So we'll see how the output and the quality of this video is once I watch it on a tablet or on a TV or even on my phone because I know that sometimes you know when you record with your phone it could be slightly different quality then once it's uploaded to the internet um, I think I'm recording in um, 60 um, ultra HD which typically should be um, 4k at 60 frames per second but anyhow let's start today's video for those that haven't been that haven't been following along uh, regarding this tank this tank has been set up for more than one year um, anywhere I think it's like a year and a half now but there was a stage in this tank's life where it was thriving, all the cores were doing good. I was finally feeling confident on keeping SPS. This whole top layer of my rockscape was filled with um, a bunch of golden anaporas, some digitatas, some um, bird's nests, as well as some green slimer corals. But unfortunately, like it happens to me a lot of times, I lose my interest on my tank. I, um, basically, I just leave the tank be, thrive on its own. My husbandry, it's below par. And the result of it being is corals, um, you know, some of them unfortunately dying or having some sort of um, algae bloom. But there was, there was also a stage in my briefing life where I feel like giving up. I actually feel like sen selling everything. Um, and and I was going to be like more focused. And you know. Accumulating all that budget to set up a 200 plus reef tank. But I was also lazy trying to post everything up for sale. I did sell a couple things. I don't know if I, I sound like a broken record reprinting myself. But I ended up selling one of my um, greatest coral pieces that I had which was right here if you guys go back a couple months back it was a jawbreaker really stunning with some green on it as well I have to I used to have a large can um, a large elactus mushroom super nice and beautiful if you guys go to Instagram twins reef you'll be able to see some pictures of that elactus mushroom as well as the jawbreaker coral um, so when I was Thinking of, you know, getting out the hobby, sending my corals, my fish, my equipment to save up and later, you know, get a bigger reef tank. Um, I started to sell some stuff, which now I regret. But it's fine that I rehomed them because later after, that's when I stopped, you know, paying attention to my tank. And that's when I noticed a bunch of issues when it came to algae blooms, corals dying. And I even started to see some um, bubble algae as well as abstasia. So once, um, you know, that reefing bug bit me, um, I felt more dedicated, more interested in focusing in my reef tank. I already have everything that previously I would complain about why my, my tank wasn't thriving when it comes to equipment. Um, for those that are new to my channel, this was supposed to be the tank where I do everything right. Um, I brought everything brand new. This is the Red Sea Reefer 300 G2. And I decided to go with what everybody talks about. Um, Ecotech brand equipment supposedly is top of the line. I went with XR15's G6's. And these are the pros. Um, I went with the MP40's as well. I got a Milwaukee PH probe. And I got the reef dose from Red Sea, um, the two head. And uh, for the first time, I started to dose um, off a reef. I have off a reef down here and um, my sump. Unfortunately, oh, I thought the light was dead. So I have it in a seven gallon bucket 
or dog food container. We have Alpha Reef there. That's going to last me a whole year. We are using the Simplicity um, skimmer that has done a good job. And the, I'm still using the stock um, auto top off. And all I'm using is filter floss and I'm using the Red Sea activated carbon. And I'm also using this block to host all that beneficial bacteria. So there was a stage in this tank's life where I got comfortable. The tank was thriving, corals were growing, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna just leave it alone. And next thing you know, the corals are gonna be super big, super healthy. But I didn't notice that my reef dose stopped working. And um, and I that that cost my kalini, mag magnesium, calcium to drop because I had a bunch of corals growing, and especially having SPS and the LPS, you know, they consume all that kalini and calcium to grow and to build their skeleton. Um, my corals started to die, started to lose their colors. Not only that. Um, but my salinity was high. Um, I don't know if somehow I adjusted the, the speed of my return pump. So if you increase it, what that's going to do, it's going to lower the water levels on your sump. And it's going to activate that, re that um, auto top off to activate and pour more water into your tank. Um, so I don't know if I said that my salinity was high. It was actually low. Uh, my salinity was low and um, so you know there was a lot of things going on now I learned from that mistake I have two salinity testers I use the Honda test kit and I use the regular uh, refractometer if that's how you pronounce it correctly and um, I started to you know check my levels when it came to calcium alkalinity magnesium and all the trace elements um, they were low as well and i later found out that my reef dose pump wasn't working due to a wi-fi issue and i never got no notification so i think this dosing pump was out like for two months but now i have it back online um i started to do water changes every week um and to be honest guys i'm not gonna lie i haven't test um you know all the elements to this water when it comes to Calcium alkalinity. The only thing that I have been testing has been the salinity. That is because you know I gotta make sure that I'm pouring the you know or match this tank salinity or bring it up a bit if it needed if it needed so. Um, but besides that, I still haven't checked my calcium, my alkalinity. But I am confident that it's at par at what it should be. I am using the Red Sea um, Pro bucket which is one of the salts that I really like. One reason why I really like it is because um, it tends to mix and clear up within minutes, guys. I feel like 15 minutes, it's already cleared and I feel confident enough that it's mixed correctly, but I still give it th um, 15 minutes more and after 30 minutes of you know mixing, I dump it in here and I check the next day and the selenium levels are as they should at 35 parts per mil or if not at 34.8 which i think is ideal for a mixed reef tank um so now let's jump in into what's actually going on with the reef tank itself um one thing right away i don't know if you guys are able to tell i actually added this um breeding box because some of the mushrooms started to detach themselves um, from the rock and it's probably none from right here but if we pay attention over here where these golden gonzos are they started to detach themselves because there's hardly any room for, th for them in this rock anymore um, as well as this red discosoma rock here there's hardly any room from for here as you guys see it feels like this mushroom here wants to detach itself so they basically detach themselves. The wave maker just blows them around. And next thing you know, I have mushrooms and rocks as we can see there. And that's something I don't want because I don't want them stinging or killing other corals. It has happened to me before 
when I used to have hairy mushrooms, those things will grow like weeds. And they ended up, you know, killing um, some of my acans and actually almost killing these acans that are here. So this acan and was actually almost like this rainbow. That's how it used to be due to the hairy mushrooms. And uh, literally it took a whole year for it to recover and now it's looking good. But yeah, that's that's the thing that, you know, I want to be cautious about when it comes to these mushrooms just floating around and landing anywhere. As you guys can see next to this torch, right there we have a Spider-Man mushroom. And just I just noticed there's one over there too. And there's another one over there. So I got to see if I'm able to, you know, get them out and put them into this breeding box. Um, let me show you guys a top view. I'll show you guys what I have in there. All right, as you guys can see, um, we have some red discosoma mushrooms in there. I also have some small um, golden gonzo mushrooms, and we do have some supermans. I actually put this box just in yesterday, um, and I also put um, like two hermit crabs in there with a couple of shells. That way they don't kill each other. Um, one of the reasons why I have these hermit crabs here it's just in case there's any type of algae buildup or algae growth in this breeder box. I, I don't want them to suffocate or kill the mushrooms, even though I've never seen mushrooms covered by any type of algae. Um, I just put the hermit crabs there. There's about three hermit crabs. And um, yeah, so hopefully they're able to eat any detritus or any, any type of algae that grows here in the breeding box. Um, so yeah. Besides that, my torches are doing good. As you guys can see, everything's looking happy. They're doing good. I used to have another torch. Unfortunately, it died. Um, I had bought at my local fish store, which I've noticed that the um, other euphilia that I bought from my local fish store tend to die. Um, so I don't know what. I always check the flesh. The flesh doesn't look the healthiest, but it looks good. Um, but fortunately, they died. Now, this right here, I bought this one from Ricardo's Reef Shop. Um, I don't know if any of you guys went to uh, Reef of Palooza. I'm sure he was there. Um, and I got this torch from him, and I'm super happy with that purchase. You guys can see how healthy and beautiful it is. It's actually a dragon tamer, and this camera doesn't make it justice on how nice it is i've also noticed that it seems like it's growing two um heads or it's going to split into two heads the flesh looks healthy um this one also i bought from another vendor at coral farmers market and that's where i bought the dragon tamer from ricardo i bought this one from another vendor which he's located in socal but he told me that all the corals he has he sells are usually from his tank <clears throat> And this is probably like the third time I brought from him. And all the cores I buy from him are, they always do good. This one sort of looks like the Dragon Tamer. Um, both were more vibrant, different color when, you know, they had them at the show. Again, they had the blue lights and it all depends on everybody's tanks. Some corals tend to change colors um, in certain tanks. But regardless, I still like it. It still looks nice. My lights aren't as blue as other people's but they still look good in person and nice. Um, another coral that I bought from, from the same guy that told me that one torch is this this one here, as this is like a micro gold or orange hammer, has done really well. This one as well, I bought that from him. And um, I think that's pretty much it. The other ones I, I bought locally um, from other reef hobbyists and they tend to do good, especially LPS are corals that are a little bit more hardier um, they will thrive and you know they they will be more resilient when it comes to poor husbandry um, but this one hammer that i really like is this one here as you can see it's a purple purple tips with a green stem it's really beautiful um, this one here fortunately doesn't look so well and i'm hoping for it to recover my sun kiss here doing good i've been having this sun kiss or not this one specifically but this this um lineage of sun kiss in my tank for about four or five years so they've just done so well this thing was so tiny a couple months ago and it's now as big as a dollar quarter and it it looks like it's splitting already and they just do good in my tank 
Another coral that I have is this Jawbreaker, which is doing good. There's some green in it. I actually traded this one for a green Scully. Um, it's doing good. I finally got it to attach to this rock. Next to it, there's some, you know, there's a Superman mushroom, a Lactus. I mean, not a Lactus, a Red Soma. And those are the ones that they just tend to to swim out. And now that I'm paying, there's, paying attention, there's more there, which I got to get them out and put them in the breeding box. Another coral that I decided to finally keep, I used to be scared of these, this is a scrambled egg soanthid. Um, there was a point guys where I actually um, was, um, I was fragging a soanthid. I was wearing uh, a mask, gloves, but I forgot to wear goggles. While doing so, um, there's some water, some water got on my skin, almost by my eye. And within a couple of days, uh, I started to get some symptoms. Um, I was tripping. I went to emergency room. All they told me, they said it was anxiety. But I feel like it was from polytoxins because there was a metallic taste to my mouth. Not only that, there was a rapid heart rate. Regardless, um, I like soanthids. Um, they're super collectible. There's a, a, a lot of them. So there's basically one patterns. So I... Decided to pull the trigger and finally get myself a Soanthid, so I'm happy about that. Um, another thing, guys, that I want to mention is I started to use um, Red Sea AB Plus, um, if that's what it's called. But um, so my SPS. Looked like they were dying. They lost a bunch of color. And I heard so much things regarding this AB Plus from Red Sea. And I decided to dose that in my tank. I finished the whole bottle. I think it was like 500 milligrams, something like that. And when I don't know if it's because I started doing water changes every week. I started to dose my tank. Um, or is it because of the AB Plus or it's because of everything. But um, my... Ganiporas finally decided to open up. Unfortunately, a bunch of them died, um, but it seems like they are probably gonna make it. Um, I'm just gonna give them a couple of months. I know it's once a coral, you know, tends to deteriorate, it takes a while for them to recover. So we're hoping that um, that these Ganiporas actually make it. Besides that, all my fish are healthy. My black storm clownfish, super healthy. Uh, my blue hippo tank also healthy. The fox face back there is healthy. Um, I feel like rehoming this box face, guys. Uh, it's just getting too big for this tank. And the only reason I bought it is because in my previous setup on my Red T uh, Red T Emax 170, I had bubble algae. So I bought this fox face because it basically ate all the algae, all the bubble algae there. But now that I have him here, he I don't know. It's because I'm feeding them good. But he tends not to eat some of that bubble algae that I have there in that green slimer yeah. coral. And um, I feed this tank twice a day, which I feel like it's not even enough. And I know when you don't feed fox faces that much, if there's no food, they'll go after your corals. Um, so we might be, this might be one of the last videos where we see this fox face here. I first need to find out how to catch it. Um, because there's no point of having him here um, tanks I think is too small for it and he's not doing the job that he's supposed to be doing so he is fired um, my SPS that I've noticed after using the AB plus or I don't know what I'm doing right but it looks like they want to get that color back um, I got these gold golden anaporas and when it comes to golden anaporas, what I found out that usually when they're under low par, they will be a golden color. But after, when they're in a higher light par, um, they will turn green. Uh, right now it looks like a limish, goldish color. I don't know if because it was time, but we'll see what time will tell. Another coral that I really didn't like in the beginning was the stylos because it was just like a really common coral. And it didn't really have that much color, but now that I have it in person... This video makes no justice on how beautiful it looks in person. It's blue. You're always able to see those little technicals. Technicals, or I don't know how you pronounce it. 
um, being moved by the current of the water. And it just looks really vibrant, really nice, really alive. So this stylo is probably one of my favorite corals in this tank. Um, and then above it, we have a frag rag, which are a bunch of anaporas and some SP, um, some bird's nest. They lost their color, but I'm going to give it some time and just hoping for them to recover. And if they do recover, either I'm going to put them in this rock, depending how these corals do. If not, I'm going to rehome them. But for now, I have to keep all these SPS and I'm just hoping that they will recover. I don't care how long it's going to take because I'm not in a rush of adding or removing corals to this tank. All I'm worrying about right now is for all my corals to recover, for all the, um, the chemistry of the water to stabil stabilize, everything to be more stable when it comes to salinity, when it comes to alkalinity, magnesium, calcium. I want everything to be stable. When everything's stable, that's basically the key to success when it comes to reef tank. It's not really about the lights. It's not really be, uh, because of the, of the flow of the water. It's not really because of the equipment that you have. It's all of it being stable. That's, if there's not a lot of you know changes, dramatic changes to your tank, the corals are going to do good. They're going to adjust. And once they're, they're used to that climate and that tank and that setting of that aquarium where they're at, they're going to thrive, they're going to grow, and they're going to be good. Sometimes we want our corals to, to overgrow, or sometimes we, we change settings on our tank just for one specific corals because we want, we want that coral to be happy. Just because we add one coral, we change everything and make everything worse for the rest of the corals. And I think, you know, that happens to each and every one of us. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, just want to let you guys know everything's doing good. Um, I've been happy with this tank. Um, I really like how everything's growing. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll keep you guys posted in the next video when I actually check all the parameters of my water. Um, and I'm probably going to continue to be using the AB Plus solution from Red Sea. I feel like it is doing something. I don't know if it if it, it's if it's that AB plus or it's it it's because I'm now dosing or because I'm doing water changes. But I actually just this week I stopped doing water changes every week. Um, just after today is gonna be water changes every two weeks because one thing that could happen, guys, is if you do too much water changes, you tend to get rid of all your beneficial bacteria, and if your tank's too clean. All that bad bacteria will grow and you're going to have um, cyanobacteria issues. That's one thing that happened to me previously in my um, Innovator Marine drop-off tank. Everything was doing well and next thing you know, I had issues with cyanobacteria. I spoke to the owner of my local fish store and he told me, hey, your tank's too clean. I used to turn off the lights, do water changes. And um, when, when I turned on the lights, cyano wasn't there. But within some hours, the cyanobacteria will come back to life. At first, I thought cyanobacteria was algae, which it's not. It's, bac it, it, it's bacteria. It's bad bacteria that we don't want. It will suffocate your corals, cover them, and will kill them. That happened to my innovator marine. All my corals died there, fortunately. Only my anemones um, survived, and I later on rehomed them and shut down that 20 gallon. But I was able to get rid of those cyanobacteria. How I did it, I stopped doing water changes, and I started to dose beneficial bacteria to my tank every day according uh, to the recommendations of the manufacturer. And that's how I got rid of cyanobacteria, just dosing beneficial bacteria. That beneficial bacteria will overpopulate that bad bacteria and would outcompete it for all the sources, nutrients that are in the tank. And the and that that cyanobacteria is always going to be in your tank. It's always going to be there. But as long as you have a healthier the healthier bacteria in your tank, better population, everything's going to be doing good. Another thing that I want to tell you guys about before we end today's video, I went to my local fish store. I seen their display tank was super clear, super nice, uh, and I questioned myself, hey, why is this tank more nicer than mine, more clear, the water looks crystal clean, if it's from the same manufacturer and it's an older generation, I was assuming, hey, the, or, or, hey, the water, I mean not the water, the glass itself should be the same quality. I asked 
to see what was in the filtration system. And one thing that um, that was different than this one was the fact that they had a refugium. They had some life sand, they have some shado, and they have a mangrove. And that is something I've always wanted to try. And I think I'm going to try it and see if that's going to affect the clarity of my water. And it's going to help with the phosphates and the nitrates on my main disp on my tank itself. I just have to see how I'm able to, uh, to you know, modify this part of this stock sump. So that way I could have a refugium here. Uh, I'm still going to keep that, um, that beneficial bacteria block. Um, so that is something I just want to let you guys know. I am going to be adding a refugium, and then I'll let you guys know how things go. Um, I think the refugium is going to help with the clarity of the water and with the nitrates and with the phosphates. Because um, one thing, your tank won't look as clear is because there's always going to be bacteria or I mean some algae on the glass causing it to look a little bit foggy. Um, and that's just that's just my opinion, you know. There's no proof behind it, but that's what I feel. So I want to give that a try. But besides that, tanks looking good. Um, I'm good. Everything's good. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, I am out. Peace.